Hello everyone, welcome to Arbor Month. Arbor comes from the Latin word Arbor, which simply means tree. So this is the month that people are encouraged to plant a tree. And every year a common tree and then a rare tree is chosen as tree of the year. So the winner of common tree of the year is the Cape Ash or the Essenhout. This tree is found in Cape Town, all over South Africa, up into Limpopo and beyond. This is a large attractive evergreen tree that has been used as a street tree in many towns and cities in South Africa. You can see it lining the streets of Stellenbosch. And on the other end of South Africa, you can sit under it watching the animals go by in the Kruger Park. It is also a good ornamental garden tree and its fruits are enjoyed by birds and mammals. Birds such as Neisner and purple crested luries, barbets, bulbuls, mouse birds and hornbill eat fruit of the Cape ash tree. Baboons, monkeys, bushbuck and Nyala readily eat the fallen fruits of this tree. The leaves are browsed by domestic stock and game. The winner of the rare or uncommon tree of the year is Addisonia digitate, otherwise known as the baobab or the crema tart. It is also known as the monkey bread tree, the upside down tree, the bottle tree, tabaldi tree and the dead rat tree because the fruit looks like rats hanging from their tails. The baobab tree is also referred to as the tree of life because it has so many uses and provides shelter for so many of God's creatures. The baobab's flowers are big and white and bloom at night, giving off a pungent odor that attracts the nocturnal bats to feed off its nectar. The powder that is extracted from the fruit of the baobab tree is used to create a refreshing drink similar to lemonade. The pulp of the baobab seed pod consists of six times more vitamin C than an orange, 50% more calcium than spinach, and enough flavor to keep any simple dish from tasting bland. The baobab tree tastes similar to that of a pear, but more acidic because of the high vitamin C content. Fresh baobab leaves provide an edible vegetable similar to spinach, which can be also be used for various medicinal purposes including the treatment of kidney and bladder disease, asthma, insect bites, and several other disorders. The bark from the baobab tree is pounded to make rope, mats, baskets, bracelets, paper, cloth, and even glue. The baobab tree fruit is a traditional snack for children on their way home from school, as well as a healthy dietary supplement for pregnant women. As you can see, there are so many uses and so many stories about the baobab tree. 
Here is Mrs. Modiba with a story for you. Many African communities from Ghana to Malawi have passed down their stories for generations. In certain cultural beliefs, deceased relatives are buried at the base of baobab trees, where it is believed that the trees become imbued with their souls. It is believed that kings and elders would hold meetings under the baobab tree with the belief that the tree's spirits would guide them in decision making. The flowers of the baobab bloom at night. The San people believed that any person who plucks the flowers will be torn apart by lions because there are spirits in the flowers. It is believed that people who drink the water where baobab seeds have been soaked in will be protected from crocodile attacks. If young boys are bathed in water where the bark from a baobab tree trunk was soaked in, they will grow up to become strong and healthy men. Here are one of my favorite stories, Creation of Baobab, based on an old Shona story. The first baobab grew next to a small lake. Taller and taller it grew until it started noticing the other trees. Some were tall and slender, some had brightly colored flowers, and others had large leaves. Then one day it saw a reflection of itself in the lake, which shocked it to its roots hairs. There in the mirror of the lake it saw a huge, fat trunk covered in bark that looked like the wrinkled hide of an old elephant. Small, tiny leaves and pale, creamy flowers. Very upset, the baobab complained bitterly to the creator. Why did you make me so ugly? It wanted to know. Why couldn't you make me elegant like the palm tree with its straight and slender trunk? Why did you have to make me so big and fat? The baobab protested. Look at the masses of bright and beautiful flowers of the flame tree. What about me? Why couldn't you give me flowers like that? On and on the baobab went, wailing and bemoaning the bad deal it had been given. When it spotted the fruit on the fig trees, its indignation knew no bounds. Although it was a well-beloved creature of God, there was a downside to it all as well. The tree liked to make its opinion heard to everybody, whether they liked it or not. Not even the poor animals were spared. One day, the baobab would comment to the creator on the look of the zebra. It looks so ugly. Why did you do that? Hyena and the saddle build stalk were not spared either. Oh, what a bad mouth! It grew into a really nasty habit and everyone was getting irritated. Everybody was frustrated at the tree and the fact that it could not hold its tongue. God was becoming more and more exas exasperated with the wailing and complaining of the baobab until eventually, determined to silence the baobab forever, he came down and yanked it out of the earth. Nevertheless, he did not want to abandon it and leave it to die. So he simply dove it into the soil upside down, its extensive roots expanding far into the sky. And this is how the baobab got his current looks. And from that day on, the baobab could no longer see its reflection or complain and it has been working in silence, paying off its ancient transgression by being the most useful and helpful tree around. Knowledge is like a baobab tree. One person's arm cannot encompass it. Be grateful for what you have. You're unique, you're special, and don't complain. One of the wonderful things a baobab tree does is store large volumes of water in its trunk. 
which is why elephants, eland and other animals chew the bark during the dry seasons. Animals like baboons and warthogs eat the seed pods, weavers build their nests in the huge branches, and barn owls, mottled, mottled spine tails and ground hornbills roost in the many hollows. The creased trunks and hollowed interiors also provide homes to countless reptiles, insects and bats. Our reading from the Bible comes from Luke 6 verses 43 to 45. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good, and the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. This message is telling us that our words are a reflection of our hearts. Let us not be like the old Baobab, that moaned, complained and criticized. That was before God turned the tree upside down. Let us be like the new baobab tree, which produced good fruit for so many creatures to share. Let's be careful of what we say and be kind to others. Are we producing the right fruit in our lives? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I think we can all find some things that we need to work on. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to be as generous as the baobab tree. Help us to provide water when there is a drought in someone else's life. Help us to be a place where people feel safe and protected. Help us listen to others as they tell their stories. We pray that you would help us to examine our hearts and only say things that are going to build and not break. We want to be like a big strong baobab tree rooted in the Word of God, solid and dependable, caring for all the creatures of the earth. We thank you for the excellent lessons that we can learn from your beautiful trees. We pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Simba!